Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment. Hello, and welcome to Champions of Psychology, a show with the goal of openly talking about mental health and gaming presented by Codename Entertainment. I'm one of your hosts, Trevor Bettis, and joining me each and every week is an amazing person who is... Mitra Jordan, I guess. Are we talking about me? Should I yes. look around? Yes. Is anyone else here? You are the amazing person. <laughs> Yay, I'm amazing. Woohoo. Good to remind oneself of that now and again. So yeah, I'm Mitra Jordan. I'm a registered clinical counselor working out of Victoria, British Columbia, and I'm here to talk about all things mental health. But today, specifically, we are talking about ADHD. It's our final episode on ADHD, and we are the talking season about... Least. The season, at least, we always have plenty to say it's true. and plenty of tangents to go on. Um, but so, yes, today we are talking about uh, medication and ADHD. Mm -hmm. Please remember, we are not doctors. Yes, this is not to specific advice of any kind. This is just more generally talking about the use of medication with ADHD Um common thought processes and myths around education, um, medication, I mean. We're going to educate about the Medicaid. <laughs> hey! hey. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about what leads people to choose medication, what happens when you're on medication, some of the barriers to medication as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, why don't we start things off with uh, the way we do on the show, which is, you know, we're, we're talking about what we're talking about. Why are we talking about it? We're talking about medication because, there, first of all, it's a significant and useful aspect in ADHD treatment. Uh, many people who were um, diagnosed with ADHD as children will have perhaps experienced being on medication mm -hmm. um, and will may have tried several different kinds because as we develop and change, so too do, does our body's response to medication and to amounts and such things. Um, we're also talking about it because generally when we talk about mental health and medication, there are often uh, stigmas to taking medication. People have many, many opinions about medication and there are many myths associated with it for mental health generally. And certainly there are some that come to mind for ADHD. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, a lot of those hit home. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, as a kid, I was on, uh, medication for ADHD and, uh, as an adult, I've just started, uh, doing that again. So this is, uh, very, uh, timely, uh, for me. It's interesting. Mm. Yeah. And for me, I wasn't diagnosed, um, as ADHD until adulthood and after my children were diagnosed, which is actually very common for female bodied people with ADHD. And so the medication has kind of been an interesting journey to figure out what works for how long mm -hmm. and so on. So one of the challenges with having ADHD is that certainly speaking for myself, um, and my observations, too, is that it's easy to feel overwhelmed yeah. with one more thing, um, which medication can certainly feel like, oh, God, yet another thing to deal with with ADHD. And so we'd like to kind of help just kind of explicate a little bit about the medications and a better understanding of which kinds there are out there because it can be overwhelming to sort of learn about the different kinds of medication and then figure out to trial uh, medications and how your body responds to it and how you feel about it and maybe what to look for. So that's what this episode is about. 
So, okay, so let, let, let's let say that, you know, there is someone out there that is uh, thinking about uh, getting medication. What are some things that they should know about or even go uh, find out about themselves? Okay, so the first thing let's talk about is that stigma piece we mentioned earlier. And so there is this idea that medication changes you and you should be able to cope without and also and i think this is a big one that medication is somehow an easy way out mm -hmm. and i think there's a fear of depending on i'm going to call it another tool to cope with things but i'm going to say if if you broke a leg you'd be using crutches yeah you'd be in and, a cast yeah <laughs> right the difference here is that your leg will then heal but you may after all need to be um, using medication for some time. Yeah. Um, you may, with ADHD, of course, be using medication for a long time. You may be using it for a lifetime. And I think one of the challenges there is this idea of being dependent on something for your whole life. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. You've had ADHD for your whole life. You know? Yeah. Um. There are lots of ideas about how people can cure ADHD. There, sometimes with an ADHD diagnosis, we might be talking about something that isn't ADHD. Yeah. You might, for instance, be experiencing severe trauma. This might not mean that you don't also have ADHD. These are matters to bring up with your medical professionals and with psychiatrists to sort of determine a diagnosis. We aren't really speaking to that today. I raise it because sometimes there's this idea that, well, what if it isn't really ADHD? Or what if I'm taking the wrong medication? Or what if I could cure my ADHD? Chances are, if it's something that is passing, it wasn't ADHD. Mm -hmm. So ADHD is a neurological and neurodevelopmental disorder. That's what it's called in the DSM. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is part of the way our brains function and they have since we were born. It's not something that you develop. When we talk about people growing out of it, it's not really that they grew out of it. They yeah. just found ways to cope with it. Mm -hmm. Medication is simply another tool in our toolbox to cope with it. Yeah, that, that I think that is... I, it being a, a tool and it being like, and you know, and you, you said like, I, I even Dr. Reese, like medication is a crutch. <laughs> Thank you, Mitra. Uh, which was, uh, yeah, like that. The thing is, is like, that's not a bad thing. It is a tool. It is a, it is a thing to help you. It is a thing that, uh, you know, you can decide, Hey, I want to, uh, you know, I want to have it a little bit easier in this area of my ADHD, you know, instead, and you were talking earlier about being overwhelmed and stuff. If I can be, if I can have less worry about, you know, losing focus or anything like that, um, that's going to help me in other areas as well. Which, exactly. And, and, that, and that's the reason why I personally, again, this is not me advocating for that you should absolutely do this. You have to make the decision on your own. That's why I personally decided to get medications because I wanted a, at least a, a something of a break from <laughs> the constant oddness of ADHD being in my life. Um, exactly. I think we also really, yeah, you're right. We, we make we're very negative about this idea of a crutch, yeah. but I wear contact lenses. You wear glasses. Yeah. Um, I use various tools throughout my day to make my life better. And we all do that in various ways. So how is this any different? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's an, it's an invisible disability is ADHD. Um, and if I'm able to cope better with it, then that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges of a disability that's invisible is you end up advocating for the fact that you happen to be dealing with ADHD because it's not as visible to others and therefore they might disbelieve you. Yeah. And that is one of the challenges with mental health and medication in general mm -hmm. is that invisibility. But you have to trust your own experience and 
the experience of those who are saying, maybe it would be useful to you potentially to try medication, or maybe these are some of the things that you can expect if you try medication. And you may decide that medication isn't for you, but what I would hate to see for anyone is that this idea of having to do it themselves that you should be able to yeah. without the help of something that might actually be useful to you. So I think that it's useful to consider availing yourself of all of the tools that might be available to support your ADHD. And yeah. medication isn't going to do it on its own. It can change some of the conditions that you experience in order to make other aspects of your life easier to cope with. I mean, my medication helps me do my taxes. So, woo. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, they, and, uh, yeah. I, we, we had it highlighted in our notes of like, I should be able to uh, part of yeah. that sentence. And like, that, I do think that is something that does uh, come up in a lot of folks with ADHD's minds, but also people who don't have ADHD and just say it to you. Um, and, and it's one of those like, you should, I should be able to do this. Well, I mean, not necessarily like you, you can do this, but you're, you might need more help to do it. It's not saying you can't do something. It's just saying that the, it's going to possibly be more difficult for you to. And there are things out there that can help you do that a little bit easier for you. Right. So one of the other challenges in dealing with this idea of medication, possibly long term, is comes up when people are processing their ADHD in the first place particularly for those of us who are um, diagnosed in adulthood, we have maybe a grief process in terms of making sense of the more challenging experiences we had growing up or the fact that we never felt like a good student, which may have impacted, do I choose to go to university or what do I do instead? Or maybe I'm just not that smart or maybe I can't keep up or any of the sorts of negative thoughts and self-talk that we have about um, us and how we function in the world, right? So um, processing all of that, plus then considering that, oh, I have this lifelong condition that I now have to cope with and that I may have to medicate is just yet another thing yeah. that feels really stressful and that can also bring up grief. Yeah, There can be, and if there was one thing I'd like to eradicate, besides world peace, it would be this, the self-judgment around having or deciding to try medication. Yeah. And the, self, the sense of oneself as not being complete or enough just as you are, because now you need medication. Yeah. You're always enough just as you are. It's just that if you want potentially to look at another way of coping, with ADHD besides time management and all of those other strategies we might use, this might be one. Yeah. So. The, um, the, I, I do want to point out what uh, Dr. B said, because it's, it's another point uh, that I have about meds. Uh, it says, uh, literally doing my business taxes right now, dot, 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 and I forgot to take my ADHD meds. No wonder I'm struggling. That is one of the things that I will point out is the hilarity of all of this, which is, hey, what can help me to uh, focus more with this disability that I have that makes me forget to do things often? Oh, remember to take this pill every day. <laughs> 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 it's oh, like there are, there come are, on yeah. man <laughs> yeah there are there are definitely enough times where i've forgotten or and both trevor and dr b will assert this one's true like we'll be on we'll be doing our meeting on a monday and i'll be like oh I just take my notes before I, I sit down. <laughs> I I vividly remember one prep meeting where we were where the three of us were in there talking and something came up about medication and you and Dr. B in unison went, Oh crap! <laughs> and you both got up and got your bets. <laughs> Uh, good times. Uh yeah. but the the like one one of the other things that though that um that you talked about was like, oh, that the medication is going to change you. You're going to be a different person sort of thing. And I like, I do think that that is an extreme because like, while being on medication, you might, you know, for ADHD, you might be calmer. You might, you know, have, you know, you might not be bounced off the walls as much or anything like the, the, 
it's not necessarily like you're not a different person. You are presenting yourself differently than how you were before. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, personal example, I, I like I said, I took uh, uh, meds uh, it, when I was a kid in school. And I remember in fourth grade, there was like this two week stint where I didn't any uh, for a little bit, like we, we were trying something out. And that two weeks ended with my teacher personally calling my mom, her, my mom showing up at school and my teacher going up to her and going, whatever you changed, stop it. Go back to what you were doing, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I was taken home for the day. Um, so, you know, that, that is, that, that, that is, that is a thing. Um, yeah. um, well, mm, mm, you know, I don't usually do this, but there's a question that popped up that I feel is a good segue to things. Uh, the, the Thor out first says question, what about side effects? So that is, I think the thing that should be talked about, like there, yeah. these medications do come with side effects and that is absolutely something that you and your doctor should talk about. And there should be a dialogue about knowledge of beforehand. Yeah. Um, we we were going to, we're actually getting to that as mm -hmm. well. We were going to, and I have it on our notes. Oh, here. do we? Oh, I, did I miss that one? Ah, well. Yeah. yeah well, Thor will hold on to your question well. for a little bit. Yeah, not to worry, because I do feel that that's an important one to consider, yeah. for sure. Um, and anyway, let's get to the different types of medications. Yeah, let's go briefly. through that first. Thor, we'll get back so, to that. Yeah, so there are stimulant medications for ADHD, and these are the ones most people talk about. You know, you say ADHD meds, and most people talk about, they say Ritalin. You say depression and most people say Prozac, right? Mm -hmm. Familiar? Anyway, so yes, the the two stimulant medications are methylphenidate-based, of which Ritalin is one, or amphetamine-based, of which Adderall is a common one. Um, there are non-stimulant medications. Um, Intuniv is one. Atomoxetine or Stratera is another. So... There you go. There is also off-label an antidepressant medication called Welbutrin or Bupropion that affects similar pathways, uh, noradrenaline as well as dopamine pathways in the body. So for some people with maybe quite mild ADHD, they might be able to get by with an antidepressant that mm -hmm. kind of off-label has similar effects. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned this not because I am a doctor and supporting me. I am not. But what I want you to kind of have a sense of is there are different ways to tackle your ADHD with medication. And it's really worth having a discussion um, with a doctor about medication if you would like to go that route or if you decide to explore it at all. And to then consider that medication is also about trialing the yeah. correct ones for you. Yeah. And medication also will change over time, potentially, depending on what you need, if your body changes, what you're going through. And so when you consider a long term medication, which many people consider ADHD to be long term in the sense that you're going to take it perhaps for quite some time yeah. in your life, um, you need to recognize that it is an ongoing process mm -hmm. and that there isn't one perfect medication you're always going to take. Very likely, it will change over time. So, well, the, that's... It, an, yeah, that, that was the thing that I kind of wanted to, to dig into there was because, like, you know, we, we talked about um, uh, off uh, air about how, like, yeah, the, there's you could be taking something for uh, a bit of time and like three or four years later, it's not working as well. And so you have that dialogue with your doctor about, you know, trying something else. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that original one isn't ever going to work again, but like you, you, your body has gotten to the point where it's like, it, it needs something different in order to uh, spark the things in your brain that you need to work. <laughs> Yeah, so bodies will continue to seek homeostasis and we can adjust, particularly to stimulant medications. We can adjust to them to the point where the requisite stimulation to, um, to our brain isn't happening the way that it needs to. Uh, for instance, I used methylphenidate uh, or Ritalin for some time with great success. And then along came the time where 
it stopped being quite as effective. So I was still actually getting kind of cranky, mm. which I didn't normally get on, on my, my medication, but I was starting to get cranky, but also distracted. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not great. Um, so in the end, I'm, I'm now trying something else, which seems to be working. Um, and there were a couple of other experiences in there where one of the stimulant meds left my muscles quite sore. And that is one of the side effects that you might experience. Um, it's great to have other people in your life with ADHD um, to talk through some of these experiences. Um, one of the people in my life with ADHD happens to be related to me. Mm -hmm. And we both had this very similar response to one of the medications where we just felt kind of almost exhausted and flu-like with sore muscles at the mm. end of the day. Yeah, it was an interesting one because when we went back to the doctor, it was one that wasn't particularly common or known, but it was clearly my response to it and uh, my youngest kid's response to it. Um, so that was kind of a useful thing to know yeah. for us that, oh, great in other ways, don't know if I can live with this, Yeah, which is something to consider when it comes to side effects is looking at what you can live with, you know, a medication that is ideal, obviously will have very few side effects, but one of the most common side effects with stimulant ADHD medications is loss of appetite. Mm -hmm. And that's an important one to consider, especially if you can't really afford to lose weight, um, and if you struggle with eating in general, because another challenge with stimulant medications is many of them do better in your body if you've had some, if you're protonated, had some protein in the morning, or had some carbs, protonated. Had some food. Am I protonated today? Oh, uh, um, a new so, metal and, band and, coming this fall. <laughs> right? And I am someone who can't really eat in the morning. Mm. So if, so that's, that's kind of a tough one. Like, consider uh, there was one I tried that definitely like if you're not eating in the morning you're gonna be three times as emotional <laughs> for me anyway you're not gonna cope super well <laughs> and uh you know so so it's worth trialing a few different ones to figure out what's going to work the good thing about a stimulant medication is that they actually are very quickly active in your system um and depending on which ones you take, like the methylphenidate that I took was, or the Ritalin, I guess it's also called, um, was a four hour one. So very quickly I could see an effect and very quickly it was going to wear off too, mm -hmm. which a bit of a pain if you're, you know, not able to renew or take another one in the day, but it's really useful to consider a shorter form of a medication that you're interested in because yeah there are short acting and long acting um, stimulant medications. Yeah. The non-stimulant medications work much more like an antidepressant in that it um, might take some time for them to get working in your system. Um, and you take them usually once every 24 hours um, and they're just in your system and they don't affect your sleep, which is another side effect of stimulant medication is how much it can affect your sleep. Mm. Um, do not take your stimulant medications too late in the day, especially if they're an eight to 12 hour longer acting stimulant medication, because if you take them at one in the afternoon, yeah, you might not be sleeping till like after one that night and ask me how I know. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a night owl anyway. This really didn't help. <laughs> so, <laughs> so part of it is also recognizing how long acting it's going to be in your body. Uh, perhaps choosing to sample a shorter acting version of same. Um, I can share personally that mine lasts about six hours. I take it in the morning and that's fine because actually in my system, it tends to last a little longer than that. Mm -hmm. So, so this is where, again, it's really useful to kind of figure out how your body's responding to it so that you can still sleep. Okay. At night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, um, the mine, I'm, pretty sure it's about 12 hours and like yeah it, it's finding the things that um that i've had to change up because of it uh like i don't have a, a morning cup of caffeinated coffee now because mm. i take this 
And if I put both of those together, I am just, uh, you know, even I'm just way too jittery and everything. Um, and so I switched to decaf in the morning. I'll have a caffeinated one later in the day. And this thing, it wakes me up enough that I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What some people will do is they'll actually set an alarm um, and get up early and take like they'll wake up. They'll have the medication by their bedside or something and they'll wake up. Um, and take the meds and then actually go to sleep for a little bit longer mm. because it does take a little bit to start working in your system for one. So that's useful if you have to get up and get going by a certain point, but it also helps because then, you know, it's wearing off by say seven or eight that night. Yeah. So that does help you manage um, the, the medication a bit better. So these are some things to kind of consider around using medication. Um, another so that's kind of speaking to the two major side effects there. Um, but so, like, we, we should probably say like there, each of these medications has their own list that go out with them that are, it's yeah. more than that we're, we're going to talk about here because it's not specifically important other than, Hey, yeah, there are side effects. Have a conversation with your doctor about them. If this is the route you're going to go. Right. The good thing is they are out of your system fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you do try a medication and notice the side effects like the one I did in terms of either uh, emotional, if you're not eating or muscle aches and pains or something, um, then you'll know pretty quickly that something's feeling different and not super great and mm -hmm. you'll be able to change them. Um, broadly, the two side effects that you would find is the a loss of appetite and the um, activation at night if you've taken your meds too late and therefore challenges with sleep. Yeah. So those are broadly what you will you might experience with stimulant medication. Um, so if you're going to trial a medication, we have a couple of things that we think are useful. One would be talking to people in your life about this, people you trust, maybe people you live with, just so they can also share a perspective yeah. on how the medication is affecting you. Often it's people in our lives who will see the effects of the medication possibly before we do. Mm -hmm. So um, we might be really much better able to go grocery shopping without distraction. <laughs> we might not feel quite as daunted with taking on cooking that night, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, Again, we could sit down to doing our taxes without distraction. Um, and we may know Dr. B took his, by the way. To take he, he, took, he says he took him, so that's got to be going better for him now. <laughs> yeah, it'll take a little bit. He only just took him. <laughs> um, so I think that if we share, like, I know that um, for me, the decision making piece particularly like if i'm decluttering or something and i want to be able to get rid of things and i would often triple question whether i should get rid of x thing or give it away or whatever um i find th that kind of decision making without distraction much easier when i'm on my medication and that's a quick way for me to know and for those in my life to know you taking your meds yet so 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 sharing what you hope the meds will bring yeah. And uh, what you might expect to see from your doctor or from the little package booklet um, versus what you are or aren't seeing. Uh, and being able to talk about that with family and friends is really useful. Mm -hmm. Convoluted way of saying, to notice changes, get some other people so that you have people to bounce ideas off of the changes you expect to see and whether you're seeing them or not. Yep. Okay. And also irritation or other mood changes as side effects to the medication it's really useful to talk to people in your life about that and have them look out for some of those challenges you may experience with medication yep so um your experience with medication as we said is an on ongoing dialogue with your care team and it's also an ongoing dialogue with those in your life in the sense that How's this working out? What do you notice? Am I on time more? Uh, you know, and then it's for yourself, recognizing or seeing whether you can be more focused on things that you don't particularly enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like, are you able to study for that exam the way you hope to or the way you've not been able to? 
can you focus on tedious details? Like for me, um, numbers will trip me up every time. Um, and even having the patience to sort of go and look at bank balances mm -hmm. or receipts or put taxes things together and stuff like that. Like my immediate internal response has always been, oh, it's too much. But when I'm taking my medication, it's often easier to go, you know what, I'll sit down and do half an hour of this. I'll see how far I get. And often I'm able to do more than half an hour. And that's like a sign that, yeah, no, this is this mm -hmm. is working. This is making my life easier to cope with. Yeah. So things things to be looking for. So there are some things that can interfere with medication. Um Oh, and yeah. there's there's also another thing to consider and make sure you talk to your care team about this um, is interactions with other medications. So, for instance, if you are on an antidepressant, some of them will interact with your ADHD meds. This is an important thing to look at. Um, if you're on an antidepressant that does some of the same stuff. So for people in particular who are taking Wellbutrin or Bupropion and then are also taking other ADHD medications, um, sometimes these are medications that enhance each other's effects. So that's really important to talk to your care team about and just kind of clarify for yourself, is that a risk? Is it not a risk? Is it gonna be fine? Um, and the other one is grapefruit. Th so this threw me so hard yesterday while we were talking because I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, did you just say grapefruit? <laughs> <laughs> I did say grapefruit. Yeah. So grapefruit interferes, it turns out, it, with a lot of medications, it kind of enhances their effects because of the way it slows down the metabolism of something or the other. Um, and you can certainly do a bit of research on this. Um, so what it can do is it can keep more of the medication in your system. Now, it might not directly affect all of your medications, mm -hmm. but if it keeps more of one medication in your system than others, then you've also got maybe potentially an imbalance of these medications. So it's really a good idea. And I find, unfortunately, I don't know what it is, but most care providers don't say, watch out for grapefruit. <laughs> And they should. I've not been told um, that one. <laughs> I know. So that's why I'm saying it. Because, uh, you know, if you if it's your habit to eat half a grapefruit or a grapefruit, um, one grapefruit is plenty enough to interfere with your medications. Mm -hmm. And you don't want your grapefruits interfering with serious medications that may, uh, may be helping your heart or are antipsychotics or uh, yeah. antidepressants that's just generally a not good idea so just just really kind of keep that in mind and do a bit of research to see if the medications you are on are affected by grapefruit or not other citrus fruits seem to be fine i would just watch out for grapefruit and other larger citrus fruits that are grapefruit like mm -hmm. because I'm not a doctor or a chemist. I don't know if they have the same com compounds, but something to keep in mind. Yeah. I personally Just, happen to love grapefruit. I do too. I was very <laughs> upset when you told me this. I'm like, damn, I love grapefruit juice. God dang it. Right. I mean, I haven't been having any recently, I, I, which apparently is a good thing. Uh, but yeah. that's just wild. And I'm not sure if, if this also includes like grapefruit oils or extracts or something, but I would just generally be cautious about it and look into if it's mainly the juice for yourself, whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. So one of the, one of the some, other things that we had on here was uh, medication changes conditions, not the processes. So mm -hmm. what, what, what do you mean by that? I said medication changes the conditions, but not the processes. So, Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Are you reframing something that I no? It's uh, it's B on the th on, on number three. Uh, essentially, <laughs> talking about how like the medication uh, changes uh, ah. the condition of your thinking, not oh, the thinking itself, not thought processes. Yeah. Yes. So there is nothing that is going to be a magic bullet or a magic uh, formula, right? So um, when you take medication, whether it's or depression, anxiety, or a condition like ADHD, um, it's really important to keep in mind that although the medication may change 
a neurological condition or how much of a um, neurotransmitter you have in your synapse. <laughs> so you might have, for instance, with an antidepressant, it might be a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which basically means you have more serotonin that your body made, but more of it mm -hmm. available in your brain. So having more serotonin can make other things easier mm -hmm. to cope with. So for example, you might have a little bit more energy. You might have a slightly more positive outlook. You might, in other words, be able to cope with your life a bit better. It's the same when our understimulated brains that have ADHD have a little more stimulation. We're more able to cope. Yeah. We're more able to sit down and do the taxes. But nothing's actually going to lead you into that chair to sit down and do those taxes. You still have to be the one to do that. So you also have your conditioning, your habit patterns, and your other barriers that you need to eliminate in order to actually change your behavior. Yeah. So you still are going to experience potentially doing your taxes as tedious. The difference is that when you sit down to do them, you might find surprisingly that you're a little bit more focused and able to cope with them. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're going to love doing your taxes. To be clear, I still hate doing my taxes. <laughs> I don't think do anyone... I get them I you know even I don't even think tax preparers like doing it. I I think they are just like you know what I'm good at it. I'll take the money. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no that that is I think that is a a good one to point out because um, I do feel that there are some folks on on the internet who have given off the perception of like taking medication just completely changed them as a person and made them normal and uh whatnot and it, it is it's it is not a like you said magic bull i think that's really a, a good way to say it where it's like it's not going to uh change everything but it is going to make things easier for you to do um and, yes. and not have you know your brain going at a, a million miles a minute when you're just like i just need to remember my mother's maiden name <laughs> what is it on the tax totally. form <laughs> totally. that, that, that's a black books reference for folks out there um <laughs> yeah because otherwise otherwise in order to do it you're like crap i guess i gotta call my mom and uh, then you're calling your mom then you're getting into a conversation about something else then you wander into the kitchen and you realize you're hungry and you've got to have lunch then you go have lunch. see because now with the medication you might go yeah i'll just send her a quick text to figure that out yeah and i'll get on with this other part of the taxes then i'll come back to the maiden name question and i'm still working on my taxes mm -hmm. and that's the difference so your capacity to eliminate or cope with distractions is going to be better, but that doesn't change the fact that distractions exist or that there's a well-worn habit groove around some of those distractions, yeah. which for me would look something like, okay, I got to sit down to and do my taxes. Okay. You know what I need in order to do my taxes? I need a cup of tea. Then I'm going into the kitchen, mm -hmm. right? Then I'm complaining to myself about people who left dishes in the sink who weren't me. Or maybe they were, but who remembers? And <laughs> oh, too relatable. <laughs> and so then I'm like, nah, nah, angrily doing dishes or some such thing. Then I'm like, yeah, now I'm hungry. And you see where I'm going with this, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's it's really just about, I have a slightly better capacity to eliminate distractions, which can be life-changing. Not saying it's not, because it is. But I still am me. Yeah. I didn't change. Yeah. You know, and that I think is a big piece of this. It's like people are scared that they're going to change. You won't change. I'm still just as capable of going off on a tangent. Oh, yeah. I can just bring myself back more quickly. Or there's a tiny bit of gap. And this is something that actually, um, now I've forgotten his name. Yeah. It's not going to help with memory problems. Uh <laughs> yeah, it's really not going to help with memory problems. But um, yeah, but there's a little bit of a gap between. Ha ha, I should tell that funny joke. Yeah. To no, that's a tangent. I'm yeah. not going to go on it right now. It's that. And that's partly what we want to do is create that little bit of space between thought and action, because that's part of what helps us actually stay focused. Mm -hmm. So, Russ Barkley, who talks about that. Mm. Um, 
So a couple of other things. There might be reasons to go off of medication um, or to at least consider reducing medication. And actually, Jessica McGay of How to ADHD talks about this uh, in terms of pregnancy. So that might be useful for some of you. Oh. Um, what to do to cope when you can't take your medication or when you have to take less of it. Hmm. Another thing that you need to consider is um, traveling. So stimulant medications might be illegal in some parts of the world. And it might be that even if you have a prescription, they're not super keen on you bringing them in. Yep. Uh, Japan is one of these places. So look into cross-border with your medications. Um, I live in Canada. I haven't found a problem coming into the U.S. But um, I think that it's useful to consider where are you going, how much of your medication you need, and can you carry it mm -hmm. with you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's yeah. a very sweet message uh, in the chat. Thank you so much for that. Uh, what, the, uh, what, what I was going to say, though, before I forget that, because I'm going to read all that. Uh, the my, my wife actually gave me a really good piece of advice. Uh, when uh, The week that I started the, the, the trial for my medication, uh, that weekend I was going to Vegas uh, for, my, for my sister's wedding. And she was like, hey, uh, I know you got the, the travel case. Take the container with you because you know if you get stopped for whatever reason like you get pulled over or something and they find that you can prove like you this is your medication um when you know that might not be uh easy to do when you are out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> um so that 100 percent. yeah that was that don't was one just, that i'm i'm remembering from yeah that one. don't just take your tablets or capsules or whatever it is you take um in any kind of unmarked box Make sure whatever you're taking yeah. has your name on it with the actual prescription, with your doctor's name and all that. Um, that is really important Yeah, because um, like, and makes crossing I, borders much, I, much easier. I have this cool little little case where, you know, I even get to like, hey, it spins because, you know, it locks up, which is great <laughs> and all. But this doesn't say Trevor is prescribed this by a legal professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Really yep. important to consider with pretty much any medication that you take. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mickey, in the chat for that very lovely message. Uh, you. We, we appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that was very sweet of you. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, what was that? What was the other one that we had? We talked about the the uh, dialogue with your with your care team. Oh, the yeah. No one can tell you what your experience should be. Um, yes, that that is that that's one that I, I do think is I mean, it's important for this show, too, because like we can talk about this stuff, you know, for an hour or 50 minutes or however long it is. Uh, but we, we can't tell you exactly what your experience should be or what it can be or anything like that. Like that is why this is something you got to look into yourself. Yeah. And people whom you trust who can sort of reflect or whom you can safely reflect with on your experience pre and post medication. And this is where I will put in a plug for therapy. It is really useful to be able to, if you have a therapist with whom you have a history and whom you, who's, who you feel is effective yeah. and helpful for you as a therapist, it's really worth scheduling a visit or two in the lead up to medication and after to just reflect on how you're responding to it, how it feels for you whether you're comfortable taking that particular medication so yeah. well yeah. I, th there was even one uh, when i was talking with the the psychiatrist that prescribed me there i was like i was i you know i was hoping that it would help me with this and she was like that's not what this does you should talk to your therapist about that and i was like okay cool good to know uh and, and yeah. you know and, and that is now a thing that i have set to talk to her about <laughs> yeah yeah i i think that um often with stimulant medication, and particularly with children, you know, we're sort of told that maybe don't take it on the weekends. Now with children, they're growing. And because of the appetite reduction, uh, in particular, the stimulant medication can affect growth just because of that, mainly. It's the jury's out on, on other effects it might have in children, and this isn't what our episode's about. But um, the point here is that some people have an idea that a break when you're taking stimulant medication is a good thing. You can judge that for yourself. 
uh, in my experience and in the experience of some of the people I have worked with, it tends to be that if I'm less regulated, more likely to lose my temper, more short-tempered, more scattered, um, then my weekend might not be as good. Yeah. Like, you know, so consider for yourself the effects of the medication and determine then how often um, it's useful to take. It's not just for your work life. It can also be for your life. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's the concern that if you take your stimulant medication every day, it will wear off quicker, i.e. you will become habituated in some way. There are other stimulant medications. Yeah. Oh, and that's what we were talking you know? about earlier. Like, it, you know, there, yeah. th the chances are good that's going to happen regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is true that in a few years you may find that it's less effective, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of there's other options to explore in terms of medication, and it's not a failure of you or the medication if you need a medication change. Yeah. So. Well, and and now, I, that I think that the 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 thing that ties into the the dialogue with the your doctors of because I I will admit like that's something that I didn't even realize going into uh, this is that this is something that I am going to have to keep up on uh, over the years and, and, you know, keep talking with uh, my psychiatrist and stuff of like how it's affecting me and everything. I did think that it was just like, okay, I got prescribed. It, it, we did the trial and we found the thing. Woohoo. I'm done. Uh, it, it, it is, it is something that I am going to need to keep up on, which is, you know, another great thing of like, Hey, got to remember to do something. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, it, it I, I, I'm happy that, to know that. And honestly, that does make, and this is me personally, that it makes me feel a little bit better about it because I do think that thinking back on it, thinking that it was just kind of this thing that was like said it and done. I, I would worry eventually of, of like, okay, but is there something better out now? Or, you know, is this what I should still be taking? And so knowing that this is what you should do, I, that, that makes me feel a little more comfortable with it. Absolutely. Our bodies change. Um, our needs change. Our work changes. And certainly our capacity to focus based on our context changes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm thinking about the really busy years when my kids were young and I was doing a master's and I really wish I'd had medication then. <laughs> you know, I really do, because that was a time in my life which was so much more stressful. Yeah. And, and there was so much more anxiety um, and so much more to juggle. Um, and even now, like, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that there's less to juggle and the kids are older and it's still possible to feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So, but I do think there's particular times in your life where it might be more... Uh, important to take medication and to have the support of medication. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. One other thing to address is something that I think really makes it challenging for those of us with ADHD uh, to cope with it. And that is the idea that somehow uh, medication is this um, is an easy way out when really couldn't you just manage your ADHD with food and exercise? Oh God, that's, oh. you know, and it's while I will be the first person to agree that exercise impacts and can help yeah. uh, with mental health um, and that eating well um, can help with mental health. Um, it's also way more challenging for me to grocery shop and cook without my medication. Mm -hmm. because then be some steps to juggle. Mm -hmm. And if I've had a busy day, good luck to me. Oh, yeah. So this idea of somehow it's one or the other is also really problematic because if my ADA medication helps me take better care in general of my health, yeah. that's going to affect a whole lot of other things in my life for the positive, but it's not necessarily going to change my neurological state. Yeah. Um, we as humans, with all of our research, with all of our work, don't fully understand how the brain works. Mm -hmm. And and brains are individual. Brains are affected by genetics, by context, by life circumstances like trauma or not, by finances in the sense that what's available to us in terms of resources, where do we live? How much support do we get? All of this affects our capacity to function well as humans, physically, emotionally, 
mentally. So to boil it down to this idea that somehow because my neurology is a little bit different and I am not neurotypical, that somehow if I eat better, I will become neurotypical. Since I've been, you know, neurodivergent my entire life, I tend to eat really well. I don't have massive pressure on my life, particularly at this time. And I am still ADHD. Mm -hmm. So it's an N of one. And I'm not everyone, but I'm just going to point out that that is really missing the point in yeah. terms of our mental health. Yeah. So. Um, well, I uh, I think that's actually a good place to start wrapping things up. Uh, Misha, any last thoughts on ADHD medication? I think that it's an individual choice and it's another tool in the toolbox, but it can be very useful. 100%. Uh, all right. Well, uh, make sure if people want to find you and what you do on the interwebs, where can they do so? So I'm at mitrajordan.com and you may find me occasionally looking into the platform for, formerly with the Bluebird. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that one. Uh, yeah, you can the also find... The bird that has had its wings clip. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm opinionated at all. <laughs> no, not, not, not anyway, no. Uh, yeah, you can find me on all those social media sites at the Trevor. There's an A hiding in there. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, I, th I, I, don't think, I don't think I missed any questions. Oh, there, we did miss one question, which was uh, Peculiar Heads a question. Is the B for bargain? I think that was directed to Dr. B. Uh, the B stands <laughs> for was. best. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that is going to do it for uh, this week's episode of Champions of Psychology. Uh, so, until next week, take care of yourself. Take care. Bye bye. Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment, it is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment.